Once you've specified and estimated your GLM, you now have an output of a beta estimate for each condition. This corresponds to the average amplitude of the bold response estimated at each voxel in your brain. Well, not your brain, but the brain that you're analyzing. So in this case, we have one beta... Once you've specified and estimated your general linear model, you now have an output of beta weights for each condition that you specified in the model. So in this case, we had a tap left condition and a tap right condition. And we might want to take a contrast between those two conditions to see which voxels show more activation for one condition relative to the other. These beta weights that are output correspond to the amplitude of the bold response, which is a proxy for more neural activity in the brain. It's a measure of blood flow. In SPM, if we want to take a contrast of these beta weights, click on the results tab, and then select the SPM.mat, which was output after you estimate your general linear model. Now here you see your design matrix again, and if you want to know which of these regressors corresponds to which beta, simply right click on this column, and you can see that it says tap left. Keep holding down the right button and scroll over, and you can see that this is tap right. So this column is left, and this column is right. Click on Define New Contrast, and let's say we want to take a contrast of the beta weights for left button presses versus right button presses. So I'm going to call this left minus right, and we want to assign weights to each of these beta weights. So 1 is going to be for left, and negative 1 is going to be for right. It's important that these weights sum to 0. So hit OK, and I can also define the opposite contrast of right minus left. And all this involves is a reversal of those weights I specified previously. So a negative 1 for left and positive 1 for right. Okay. Each one of these numbers will correspond to each column. All right. Now I'm going to investigate this contrast of left minus right. And I predict that I should see more activity in the right motor cortex because it should be more sensitive to contralateral button presses. Click Done. Don't mask with other contrasts. Don't do an ROI analysis. The title for comparison, that gets saved into the spm.mat file. And for p-value, let's say an uncorrected value of 0 0.001, which is the default and only look at clusters of voxels of 20 or greater. All right, now you see this glass brain here, and you can move this arrow around, and then click on things like current cluster so that it snaps onto the nearest nearby cluster. You can see that this blob does encapsulate most of the motor cortex. If you want another representation of this, you can click on overlays, sections, and then go to your canonical directory, which comes installed with the SPM package. This is just where we have it installed. Oops. Okay, SPM, under canonical, and then let's say single subject T1. All right, so this gives you a pretty good representation of this activity profile. And confirming our predictions, yes, we do see greater activity in the right motor cortex as opposed to the left motor cortex. Another way you can visualize this, now that you have an output T map for this contrast, is to click on check reg and then this SPM T image that's been produced. Okay. So this is just a map of the contrast of your beta waves. And you can see that the values in the right motor cortex are brighter than they are in the left motor cortex, which are negative. And the value of these T values is shown up here in the right. Last thing I'm going to show is I'm going to load back this spm.mat file, select the other contrast of right minus left. Do the same procedure, look at it at an uncorrected P threshold of 0 0.001. And now that I've done that, now I have another T map, which has been output, which will be SPM underscore 002. It's good practice to keep track of which SPM T map and which contrast corresponds to
the contrast that you just ran. I'm going to select these two output T images so I can look at them side by side. And notice that since the weights for the contrast were opposite of each other, these two T maps are just mirror images of each other. So a value I see up here is the inverse of the value I see down here. This is the contrast of left minus right. This is the contrast of right minus left. It's important to look at these T-maps and make sure that they look, again, reasonable. The same thing you should do with every step of your data after you do each pre-processing and statistical analysis procedure. That's how you run contrast on SPM, and it does get more complicated the more runs you have, the more conditions you have, but the same principles here hold.